You're fired. America knew they could count on Donald Trump to utter those two words each week when his TV show The Apprentice was on the air. It's hard not to call that phrase to mind today when President Trump announced on Twitter Monday afternoon that the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kirstjen Nielsen would be leaving her position. Donald Trump's famous tagline has apparently followed him to the White House. The Trump administration's resignations and dismissals are staggering in number. Business Insider compiled a chart of all the casualties of this administration, and it is a shock to the eye. The Trump turnover trend certainly has some resignations along with firings, but the circumstances of many of those resignations are questionable, leaving much speculation about what is really going on in the White House. Kirstjen Nielsen, Nielsen has served in this position since December 2017 and will go down in history as having presided over one of the worst migrant disaster situations in history as she enforced and defended the horrific zero-tolerance policy. She saw to the detainment of thousands of migrant children who were separated from their families at the border. It remains to be seen whether she resigned or was pushed out but we know the situation between her and the commander-in-chief was tense. Bill Shine, White House communications director and former Fox News producer announced last month that he would be leaving his position in the administration to work on Trump's 2020 presidential campaign. Shine's departure comes with the stunning severance package of $8.4 million. Scott Gottlieb, Although he had served as FDA commissioner and gained some notoriety in his stance on trying to curb the use and sale of electronic cigarettes because of the rise of teen vaping, he left that position at the end of March to spend more time with his family. James Mattis, General Mattis served as Secretary of Defense for the first two years of the Trump presidency, and although Trump's upbeat tweets announcing his departure were pleasant in tone and made many mentions of Mattis's service and Trump's gratitude, the resignation letter released by Jen. Mattis definitely struck a different chord. Mattis was respectful in his letter of resignation but clearly rebuked Trump's foreign policy and his ways of dealing with adversaries and allies alike. Ryan Zinke, Interior Secretary left the White House after being the subject of 15 different ethics investigations. Zinke had gotten a reputation as an extremely questionable spender, and it was announced in a Trump tweet in December that he would be leaving that position. John Kelly, after months of tumultuous tension between Chief of Staff John Kelly and Trump, the relationship, some say, had deteriorated to the point where they had completely stopped talking. His tenure there ended at the end of 2018. Jeff Sessions, Sessions lasted almost two years as Attorney General before leaving. He was frequently under fire from Trump for recusing himself from the Mueller investigation. Trump flip-flopped on his support for Sessions when he saw that Sessions intended to recuse, and he never had a chance after that. Don McGahn, White House counsel McGahn left the Trump administration in October 2018 after a rocky stint there. Although it was said that he was on his way out before, his involvement and cooperation with the Mueller situation clearly and openly irked Trump. And he made a quick exit. Not a coincidence. Nikki Haley, on October 9, 2018, this former South Carolina governor and U.S. ambassador to the United Nations announced her resignation. After serving at that post for two years, it was reported that Haley, a stable presence in the cabinet, wanted to take a break, Trump also citing that as a reason. Scott Pruitt, this Environmental Protection Agency administrator's resignation was announced by President Trump in, yes, you guessed it, a tweet. On July 5, Trump said Scott has done an outstanding job, but even at that time, Pruitt was under several federal ethics investigations for financial troubles and conflicts of interests. Tom Bossert, Trump's Homeland Security Advisor was actually fired from his position by the new National Security Advisor, John Bolton and Bossert's firing came on Bolton's second day on the job. David Shulkin, Trump replaced VI Secretary David Shulkin, 
an Obama-era official and a highly respected one at that, with White House physician Ronnie Jackson. H.R. McMaster, McMaster was replaced as National Security Advisor with John Bolton, former U.S. Ambassador to the UN. McMaster's time there was rocky at times, but he remained with the administration as long as he could and appeared to have left on decent tea. Andrew McCabe, Jeff Sessions had the honor of firing this one-time FBI deputy director just one day before he would have reached pension eligibility. McCabe had been planning to retire just one day after his firing after having served a 21-year stint at the Bureau. His final days at the FBI were marred by the Clinton email scandal of 2016. McCabe remains diligent that he was forced out. Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, was asked by President Trump to step down from his position and he was replaced by CIA Director Mike Pompeo. Gary Cohn, this director of the National Economic Council and Trump's top economic advisor had a history of beefing with the president over important tariffs, but officials say there was not one single factor pointing to this ousting. Hope Hicks, one of the biggest surprises, came when White House Communications Director Hope Hicks, who had been with Trump since the beginning and was considered one of his closest and most respected confidants resigned. The resignation came after she had testified before the House Intelligence Committee that she had, indeed, told white lies on behalf of the president. Rob Porter, Porter rose quickly through the ranks as a powerful staffer and was proving to have a bright career ahead of him when accusations of physical and emotional abuse were brought against him by two ex-wives. Although he denied the allegations, he left his post at the White House. Brenda Fitzgerald, after a political report that Fitzgerald purchased stock in Japan tobacco while serving as CDC director and had been involved in other questionable ethical transactions, Dr. Fitzgerald announced her resignation. Her involvement particularly in the tobacco business was considered inappropriate, given the CDC's position on smoking. Amorosa Manigault, Trump named Manigault his director of communications after previously having fired her on his TV show The Apprentice, but she left a short time later when press secretary Sanders announced that she would be pursuing other opportunities. Tom Price, Price, the Secretary of Health and Human Services was facing scrutiny across both sides of the aisle over the cost of his air travel which was coming in at more than $1 million on the taxpayer's dime for private and military jets when he resigned on September 29, 2017. Sebastian Gorka, this former Breitbart News staffer and close ally to Steve Bannon, was the deputy assistant to the president. He left because, according to him, he could better serve the president from the outside. Steve Bannon, this one made waves in the media after it was confirmed that Trump had dismissed White House chief strategist amid reports of clashes reaching a new level of hostility. Bannon was considered a key player in the 2016 presidential election and the bridge to connect Trump to his far-right voters. Anthony Scaramucci, this administration has seen its fair share of communications directors, but this one was a quick turnaround. Scaramucci was hired and fired in under two weeks. John Kelly, the then White House chief of staff pushed the issue after some troubling headlines about Scaramucci made the round. Reince Pribus, this White House chief of staff resigned a brief six months into his tenure after an ugly and public feud with Anthony Scaramucci. What a tangled web we weave. Sean Spicer, an SNL fave, this White House press secretary resigned after disagreeing with his commander in chief over the hiring of Anthony Scaramucci. Spicer's time at the White House was rough, to say the least, but he remains a Trump supporter to this day. Michael Dubke, this was the White House communications director that would ultimately be replaced by the infamous Anthony Scaramucci. Dubke was a big Trump donor. Walter Schaub, Schaub served as the director of the Office of Government Ethics, but resigned in 2017 after sparring with the White House over Trump's financial holdings. 
he went on to call the administration of laughingstock. James Comey, this FBI director became a household name as he was handling the investigation into Trump's possible collusion with Russia during the 2016 presidential election. This will likely go down as one of the fieriest controversies of the Trump presidency. Michael Flynn, Flynn stepped down from his post as national security advisor after holding the position for less than a month. It is now known that Flynn lied to Vice President Pence and others in the administration about the topics of his phone conversations with Russia's ambassador at the time of the Trump administration's transition into power. Sally Yates, Yates was appointed by President Barack Obama as acting attorney general within his first 10 days in office, and in a bold move, she had refused to uphold Trump's controversial executive order on immigration and deemed it unlawful and was subsequently fired. Preet Bharara, Bharara was U.S. attorney for the Southern District of Manhattan but was fired in March 2017 after he refused to resign. Barrara was one of several Obama-era attorneys who were asked by Trump to stay on, but then asked for their resignation after the Trump transition. Katie Walsh, this former deputy chief of staff and ally to Pry Bus left after just a nine-week tenure at the White House to run a pro-Trump group, America First Policies, 